everybody. It's class 26 and today and tomorrow is the solstice going into spring. Depends a bit which part of the earth you are, as I understand. And those of you who had the Jewish New Year, I hope it was a good festival. Um, we will try and get from you who wants to continue online to join some of the classes in the notice this week. So begin to center, feel that you're grounded, if you sit in a book. It's the usual, if you have hamstrings that are the time, perhaps have a strap or a belt or something near you, maybe a pillow, maybe a blanket, if it's, it's quite cold today, maybe warmer when you do it. Always um, some books, in case you need them, you'll know by now. So begin to center and you just start with some comfortable yoga breathing. You need to close your eyes. Feel your sitting bones extend into the crown. Drop your shoulders. Feel the energy flowing in the whole of your body as you direct your breath. Slight resistance at the back of your throat. Quiet and quiet. Full comfortable, mindful breath, without leaning forward, backwards, without hollowing your back or bringing your chest out. Just for a moment, feel your alignment, and if you can, correct it. Creating that inner silent space, mindful space. I'm going to start with a bit of a neck twist. You sit with your right leg extended in line with your sitting bone. Your left foot maybe below your knee or higher, and your elbow around it. Straighten up. You could have your left hand behind you or in your opposite waist, your palm facing out. Release the sitting bones as you breathe in. So you can look up as you breathe out. Rotate your neck. It's mainly the upper trunk and look towards the floor on the right. Tummy in, extend, left shoulder further back. Try not to lean, and as you breathe out, come back. And I'm really hugging my left leg to facilitate a twist in the upper trunk. And actually can go right to the base of your spine as well. Now the next time you look up to the ceiling or the wall behind you, hold it for three breaths. And then for three breaths, the maximum twist as your head turning to the right. The other way around. <coughs> Once again, from the base of the spine, rotate, right shoulder back, look up. Holding yourself up with your left arm, and then look to the floor on the left. Lifting out of your shoulder girdle, feeling the neck, expel a strong neck. Once again, the next time you end up maximum twist, keep that spine longer, your left leg release, and breathe, all body awareness. Same to the left. And then shake your legs and release. 
Now you could sit on your knees, or you could sit cross legs and sit cross legs for the eagle arm, shoulder one. <coughs> So make sure you're comfortably upright, not slouch. And again, you bring your right of your left, fingers of your left and your right palm. And then turn that right hand slightly to the left. Lift. Keep your armpit shoulder bed slightly down. Once you've got that pull at the back, slowly rotate your head and your neck without lifting or dropping your chin. Again, quite a strong neck one as well as the shoulder. One more dynamic sequence. And then simply center, and if you can, lift a little bit higher. Breathe. And the other way around. And press the forearms slightly together to accentuate the stretch. One more sequence of right and left. And then hold it for a few more breaths. Maybe just roll your shoulders. We're going to do the Hara breath, just getting some action. And you can imagine when you make fist, you throw the breath forward and out through your mouth. Hara already, when you do the Ha, engages your abdominals. It's sort of used a lot in the Martial arts, as you know. So you come onto your back. Have space for your arms to be above your head. Keep your elbows slightly bent, and then you go into your nose, and then ah, pushing your fists forward. Ah. Ah. You can imagine you're throwing your arms. If you can't go all the way, then just go like this. You can see I don't do cricket, I don't throw balls. <laughs> Three more times. And then the next time you come forward, stay in that forward bend. Just release. You have already, I can feel I've heated up quite a bit just doing that. Release your head, perhaps bend your knees, sitting bones back, and find your resistance. Breathing into your back. Allow your head to drop. Three more breaths. You can then do one of those strange ones where you hold it for three counts on the innovations. So you can sit like this. You should breathe in. The, um, sorry, no, we start here. You should Breathe in, you bring your arms up, cross the thumbs, drop your chin and push your arms back. Hold for three counts. And as you breathe out, interlace your hands behind your back. Palms together if you can. Bring your chest up, navel up, your head up and back. Lift your arms and then hold it to three counts. Perhaps shoulder blades further together. 
And then as you breathe out, you come into this position. Breathing in, drop your head slightly, but bring your arms back, tummy in, pause. And then as you breathe out, interlace your hands behind you. Breathing in, come up if you can, palms together. Arms up, head back, tummy in, pause. Breathe out. Breathe in and hold. So always holding it on that inhalation for three counts. One more time. And the other way around. Going. Once again, work the whole upper trunk. Last sequence. And just release into a butterfly. Your hips worked in that one. And release. Dropping your knees, easing into it. Five more breaths. We're going to do another one of those Tibetan ones, which are always movements with the breath. So sit as flat as you can. She breathes in, your arms up. She breathes out, take hold of your feet and lift them slightly, balancing. You've done this one before. She breathes in, come into a boat, if you need to keep your knees bent. And as she breathes out, you come back to holding your feet. She breathes in, extend the right angle, and as she breathes out, release forward and down. Boat, on the inhalation. Looking up, holding onto your feet, so if your arms are short and your legs are long, you have to bend your knees. Move and miss the breath. The breath really sustains it. Try and work with the breath. Out. In. Out. In. And breathe out. Get your last one, the next thing you do. And then stay in the forward bend for a little bit longer. Try and relax.
do what's called legs passing. So you keep your elbows slightly bent, release your sacrum, and you drop your chin, and then bring your knees up with your feet closer, your knees are more or less over your lower rib, and always the most important instruction is to flatten your waist. So if you've got a bit of a sway back, some people have more of a sway back, it's hard to work, and it targets the six, so-called six pack, as more the, the, the sort of core muscles which are more underneath your the surface. So press your shoulder blades down, tummy in, and flatten your um, lumbar waist region. Maybe you keep your shoulder blades down, your elbows slightly in as well. So you even feel that your neck is engaged. Not an ant should be able to get through there underneath. It's totally locked, that area, all the time. So make the movement not too large. You can focus on pressing your lumbar region, your waist down. And bring your right knee towards your right armpit and keep that waist down. So your sacrum might lift a little bit, extend the left leg. All the time you're breathing in and out, legs passing opposite. So it's not so much how far you go up and bring the knee right down. It's more how flat your back is. You can gauge those abdominals throughout. And try not to take your knee to your rib, but to the outside of your armpit or rib cage. It really takes quite a lot of force to do properly. Slow motion. Keep your armpits, shoulder blades down. Your waist anchored throughout. So if your mind is not there, it won't happen. Your side muscles are active. Pull down. Few more times. Make it your last sequence of right and left, the next thing you do. And then release that rest. Put a relief in that go of it. And just circle your knees a few times. And then slide your left leg down and keep your arms down. And make circles so you be able to make small ones, and if you can go further, make larger circles, keep your shoulders released, working into that right hip area, so it's more the lower abdominal region that's engaged, keep your shoulders relaxed, maybe your knees slightly bent, it's like you're massaging your right side of your sacrum. Pause and continue the other way around. Keep your shoulders relaxed, they're not doing it. Left leg relaxed. If you go smaller and larger, you really get to that whole sacrum area. And slide your right leg down, we're going to continue with the left leg. Explore it, keep your knees soft, shoulders released, right foot relaxed. Massaging your sacrum. The other way around.
for a moment, just come into the light on the butterfly, release your knees, slide your feet down, and allow this groin area to stretch your sacrum to release. And take a few comfortable breaths as you let go of your whole back. Feel the energy where really you've worked. Now we're going to do one a bit longer always because it's this uh, lymphatic area, thigh, the back of your leg. This one we call the plan. One of those Pilates ones. There are many different versions. Could support your head like that. Your heels are in line with your sitting bones, so it's quite a wide angle, and your hand can be here. But initially, I would just keep your hand here, so that when you keep your feet together, and you lift, you notice that the hip is not working, because it works more at the back. It might be easier to do it like this. Once you've got that position, you don't just rotate like I'm doing now, but your hip remains in the same position, then you can release your, your hand here, and do it mindfully. Press your feet together, shoulder back. Relax the lower part of your trunk into the floor. Keep your shoulder released. Targets those muscles at the back, and I'm beginning to feel them because I've already done it the last few days. They're the same muscles that you use when you walk. Which probably some of us are not doing enough of at the moment. Going to do 20 more on this side, so we know. Try not to cheat, and that's beginning, beginning to feel it now. Five to go. I also feel it in the other back of the most of the time. So you don't need the treadmill, you can just do this. How do I want? Make sure you keep your feet together. Maybe put your hand on there so you keep the hip absolutely stable. The hip is not really moving. And once you've got that, continue.
Make sure you're totally relaxed, the rest of your body. Begin to feel the build up. Once again, another twenty. Stay with the sensations. Almost there, another five. Well done if you haven't cheated. But now you should feel it. And for a moment, come into child pose or Eastern prayer position and release you back into a symmetrical position. Totally. Let's go. So you may feel that tomorrow in your buttocks a little. Um, you're going to now move to back bend, and we're going to do the um, locust, and then we do the reverse butterfly. So you can make loose fists. Some people have open hands or hands next to them. Come to your chin. <coughs> keep your shoulders rounded. Now, if you feel you're quite energetic, then keep the buttocks tight and your shoulders released, and hold it for a few breaths. If you prefer doing it in a sequence, shoulders released, lift your right leg, let go, lift one, and if that's enough, stop. If you can do the two, one, one, and then two, or you just hold it for a while and come down. Keep your shoulders relaxed. If you find it difficult on your chin, come onto your forehead, reach into your feet, and tighten the belt. Look at your last sequence, if you do sequences, and stay on your chin for a moment, interlace your hands on your back if you can, palms together, or keep your fingers in the legs, come back, and take the thighs like the arms, shoulder blades down, tummy in, firmly in, and hold it for another four breaths. Release. Come into a frog this time, as your knees nearly as wide as your mat, close to your heels or on your heels, and for a moment relax. Perhaps bend your elbows, allow your lower back to widen. And then from there we do what we call the reverse butterfly. So we're working a little bit into the hips now, we've done quite the shoulder as well. So take your knees quite wide, cross your ankles if you can, and come onto your chest, arms down. If you can, then allow the weight of the one foot to drop on the other. Relax your shoulders. If your knees are not wide enough, you're not going to feel it in a groin stretch. It's one where the sitting bones come down and you rotate the upper, the hips outwards. So just use comfortable breath and Allow your shoulders to release and relax into it. It's one of those where it's a 
you call it a restorative one, or it's maybe more like a gravity one. Allow the breath to release the whole body into the floor. Comfortable breath. If you don't feel it, your knees are not wide enough. You should begin to feel it now. Feel the shift. It should now stretch that body area that you worked before. You could change your feet and come on the other side of your face, shoulders and legs. Should be kicking in now. Two more breath. Let's see if you can do the knees Push yourself back into a child pose or Eastern Prayer position to round your lower back as a countess position. Just take a few breaths in that position and let go. Can't say it enough how important it is to let go in between your postures of any holding. Don't have injuries. You want to stand up? We're going to do the chest opener. Start with it. Classical chest opener. So either your hands in the prayer position behind your back to the opposite elbow. Front hip slightly back, back and forward. And you can do the screwing of the jaw. Slowly come back as you breathe in. Forward and down as you breathe out as far as you can. Extend the spine and bring your head up first. And activate your feet slightly. Facing forward with your shoulders, emphasize the movement of the spine, although you'll feel it in your legs, hamstring. Whole body awareness, open your chest, tummy in, back bend, folding over your front leg, not in the middle if you can help it, front leg. Hold it for a few breaths now on the back bend. And you can stay in that forward bend for longer. And now take your hands either to the floor or to your shin. If you've got support, take your hands back with your palms facing down, release your head. Front and back, back hip forward, inner thighs closer. Your feet open, don't contract your toes. Breathe, hold, ease into it. Push the other way around, first step, activate your feet, hands in the prayer position, tummy in, chest up, collarbone up, back bend, as you breathe out, fold over your left leg, release your head when you're down, head up first, extend the spine, release. I do a split breath as I come forward and down. Perhaps slowly going further back, further forward, front and back, back hip forward, feet open. Feel your spine. Of course you'll feel the hamstring too.
moving with the breath. Keep that back bend for three breaths. Abdominals engaged. Hold over your left leg. Release your head. And you can bring your hands to your shin, the foot, or if you like, bring them back. Drawing your trunk and your head closer to your leg. Inner thighs close, front and back, back and forward. Feet slightly active. Release, surrender into that. And a regular forward bend for a moment. Come up, brace your tummy muscles into an inverted stretch. And it's a good warm up for your hamstrings. Chest open as well. So now some twists. Keep your feet quite wide and then become that five-pointed star. So you reach into your fingertips, to the crown, to your feet. Breathe. And then bring your right hand down, your left hand in your right waist with your palm facing out. And rotate from the tailbone into the crown. Press into your feet. Back into the five pointed star, do it the other way around to your right hand and your left waist palm facing out and rotate the whole trunk. Reach into your feet. Quite a strong twist. I'm going to repeat that. From the crown into your tailbone, into your heel, without dropping your ear. Armpits are active, the additional stores here pull to your waist. Now the down under, so your left hand to the right foot or beyond, and your right hand to your left waist. You can rotate again, full rotation with your upper trunk. If you can straighten your knees, if you can't, then you don't. Feel the twist. If you don't feel your hamstrings widen your feet. Now once you're in it, you're going to open out, be sure, upper arm coming up. And then you could bring the upper arm across your ear, extending. Rotate. Bring your left arm up. Keep the rotation going. And then if you can, bring the arm across your ear. Up it's down. Back. Keep your wide leg position, bring your hands in front of you, like a lopsided dog, in line with your shoulders, quite far forward, but your sitting bones are in line with your heels. At least it feels like that. Drop your chest. And then bring your one arm to the opposite ankle or the center of your calf. And pull and look underneath your arms. I'm looking underneath my right arm, pulling with my left hand. Sitting bones up. A strong twist. You can reach all the way around. Pull, extend the arms, the bones up and back. Once again, into the lopsided dog, and you can take your hands through, widen your feet, pull your elbows back, or fold your arms to take your hands to your ankles. Release your head, maybe it's on the floor. Look forward and heel to your feet close a little bit. You can come into the statue with your heels on the floor. Drop your sitting bones. Push your knees slightly out. And if you can, come onto your toes. Watch it you don't. Lock your hip. And then release and shake your legs perhaps. Remember to a Warrior one into another twist. So your right foot forward, bend your front knee, 
pressure heels towards each other. And look up, palms together, cross your thumb. Keep your feet active, your heels pressed down. And then slowly rotate the back heel off the floor and come into the rotated twist with your left elbow just beyond your right knee. And then if you can, you can resist against your lower leg. And if you want to, bring your right arm towards your left thigh. Other way around, so it's, you're not holding it very long. Come into the up down warrior and gauge your heels towards each other. Look up, palms together, cross your thumb. Then swivel the back heel off the floor. Keep your front knee bent and bring your right elbow beyond your left knee, left elbow higher. Thumbs against your chest and then widen your arm so you can resist. It's actually more stable. And if you want to bring that lower arm underneath you towards the upper arm, keeping your knee bent. And coming to a wide leg forward bend. So it's keeping your balance as you make the transition from the one into the other. That's the challenge here. Up down warrior, heels engaged, look up, front knee is facing forward, not in. Swivel the back heel off the floor, bring your thumbs against your chest, rotate as much as you can, and open your rotate more. And then see if you can take your hands towards your thigh and then see you extend. Slowly come back up. Change your leg. Large step. Press your heels in, face forward, look up, palms together, grounded but lengthened, slight back bend. Swivel the back heel off the floor and come into the bend knee. Twist with your thumbs against your chest and then open the arms so you can resist. And so you can take your lower arm underneath your thigh, arm on towards it. Rotate, come into a right leg, forward bend, and release for a moment, always. Last sequence, right foot forward, up, down, worry, your heels up, toward, toward each other. Breathe, look up, swivel the back heel, come into the twist, your thumbs against your chest. Once you've got the full rotation, open the arms. And if you're stable, bring your hands toward each other and then miss you. Other way around, make sure your front knee is aligned, heels are active, look up. Swivel the back heel off the floor and come into the twist. Rotate, right shoulder higher. Off the other way around and then open up before you do that, reaching for each other. And then you should thigh to a right leg forward bend. To at least release your head. Bend your knees if you need to. Take a few breaths. So just do an inverted stretch as you heel toe in. Extend to your own version. You get back to symmetry and length in your spine. Now I'm going to move on to the moon dance, which I think most of you will know. If you can't do the right left when you squat, just stay in the squat, it's already a balance, challenging your knees and your hips. So come up as you breathe in, look up, and bring your hands in front of your chest. Slight back bend, tummy in, as you widen your arms, look into the moon, and then slowly come down into a squat. Move to the right, one knee to the floor, and then to the left, back into the squat. Push up, and release your up, looking up, palms together into the chest position and look up and come down into the squat. Right arm to the right, your left knee to the floor, come back to center, don't lean back, same to the left and then come back. So the challenge is not to lean back, it's that when you fall over. See if you can do it with the breath, it is a dance. Up as you breathe in, front of your chest as you breathe out, back bend as you breathe in, opening to the moon. And then squat as you breathe out. Keep your center, left knee to the floor, right arm out. Back to center, arms in opposite direction, back to center. Push up, you need your core as you do that. Release your arms and shoulders. You are due to your own breathing tempo. Strengthen your ankles, you have to keep your heels off the floor 
and center. Stay with the breath. Like we have to find another one because it looks like it's getting quite easy. Which it actually isn't. Perhaps the Jean Marie dance. <laughs> Let's be on the cards again. Keep it light, flowing with your breath. And I might be breathing too fast for some people, so do it in your own tempo. Okay, now there is a, instead of a backbend, it acts like a backbend, there is a warrior, number three, with the eagle arm, moving into variation, so it's always the shift in that position that's the challenge. When you ride over left, come into the warrior number three, rotate the back thigh in, balance, and once you're in it, with your head down, your back foot up, take your right arm forward, palm facing up, your left arm back, palm facing up as if you're holding two gifts, and then slowly come back. So you need core strength for those, because it is a balance. So use the buttock muscle if you need it. Left over right, come into the warrior, eagle warrior on the left, Rotate the back thigh in, so if you can keep your head and your heel more or less the same level. You should take the front arm up, palm facing up, the back one just above your back, next to you. And then come back to center. Then we're going to repeat that again. So, eagle arm warrior. Press your heel slightly in, so you've got that grounding feeling and strength. Right over left. Elbows toward each other, it's easy on your shoulder to come into the warrior number three that way. Rotate the back thigh in. And once you've got it, so you can extend the arms as your palms facing up and find that horizontal position with your back thigh rotating in. Other side. Engage your core, rotate the thigh in. From inside out, determine when you arrive if you can. Keep that level, if your back leg is high as your head, holding that gift, coming back. So once again, eagle arm, pull the elbows to your chest, your shoulders are released, rotate the thigh, perhaps keep the front knee slightly bent if that works. Then open out without falling. Creating new brain circuits, so you do new things, although well, it's not quite new. If you haven't done it for a while, create new brain circuits. You have a plastic brain. You can see how the one side is easier than the other. Come into a child pose and relax. When you're finished with the standing posture for a moment, release your back, your shoulders. Quite a lot of strength in your legs that you needed for that last one. At least I did. We're going to do the moving swan with the synergy cobra attached to it. So it's about allowing the spine to sing and move. So come into the arched cat and into the cobra, elbows bent backwards, and bring your elbows in front of you and pull your upper chest and your head up and bring your forehead back onto the floor. Take your hands next to your ribcage, a bit lower than your shoulders, come into the cobra. Immediately as you straighten the arms, bend your knees and come back with a rounded spine, exaggerate through the cat onto your heels. And that's the whole journey. Rounded cat. And as your knees begin to straighten, bend your elbows backwards, look up without hanging your shoulders and bring your forward to the floor and your elbows forward. Pull up quite strongly. Look up. 
forward back onto the floor, then bring your hands next to your ribs, back into a cobra, and then straighten the arms as you bend your knees. Round your back and rest on your heels and rest for a second. Adjusting your hands, they slide with you. So feel that movement of your spine, it literally is singing from the one into the other. With the breath, so it's three full breaths for the whole journey, forwards and backwards. Engaging the whole of your back and the whole of your spine. Allow it to flow with your breath, including your own breathing tempo. Strengthen your arms, because your knees on the floor, it's good for your wrist, it's not overdoing it. A cobra also doesn't use your wrists. Feel your spine. Flow with it. Integrating the move just the breath and your mind and your body together. You really arrive in the moment. Feel that singing spine. Then come into a wider position as you need, so you can call it a frog, one of the many frogs. So you lower back and widen and lengthen. And then you can do the, what I call the genuine cat or dog, which is sitting bones over your knees, either on your forehead or your chin. Dropping your chest and then come back. So you stretch that upper rib cage for a moment. Relax. You're going to move to the cow's head. So if you need a book or a pillow firm, do so. Start on the wrong side, but never mind. The left knee up, you can lift the right knee up. So maybe you can rock a few times, pressing into your feet if you're supple enough, and if you want to really be between your heels, try that. And once you've got that, you're going to do a side stretch first, to the side where your knee is lifted. So slide your hand beyond your foot, Keep the opposite sitting well grounded, and it's always helpful to bend your elbow, come up, and then take your arm across your ear a few times. Stay grounded. When you're ready, take that upper arm across, keep your fingers stretched, your armpits down, and maybe bend to the lower elbow a bit closer to the floor, and straighten the upper elbow a bit more. To do the twist, so I take my forearm and my hand around the knee from the base of the spine. Twist slightly resisting against that knee and thigh. Rotate. You can drop your chin to the collarbone and back a few times from shoulder to shoulder. You keep the spine upright, slightly pulling onto your knee. Then hold it to the back, the full twist, extend it to the crown, feel your sitting bones. I even press the sitting bones slightly down and together. And then, of course, the reaching forward and down. And some of you will be able to go all the way, some of you not. So find the position where you feel it in the buttock of the leg that's on top. Release your head. Just 
to allow yourself to surrender into the posture. Breathe, whole body awareness, natural breath. Drop your chin. I'm going to do it the other way around. Coming into the side stretch, maybe rocking a few times. You can really sit between your heels, as grounded as can be. So you bend your elbow, and do it three times across your ear to the side where your knee is lifted. And then hold it there and see if you can straighten the upper arm and keep your armpits down. Slide the other arm further out. This side is definitely easier for me. Reach into your fingers. Breathe. And the twist, thank you. One arm around, the opposite arm of the knee that's up, around the knee. Once you find it upright, full twist, you can drop your chin to the collarbone and the shoulder and then back a few times. Keep that upright whole body awareness. And then maintain the twist when you come back again. For a few more breaths. And then come into that forward bend variation as close as she can get to you. Fire or rest on it. You can bend your elbows close to the floor, do so, and then allow your head to drop. Breathe with that. I'm going to do what's called the easy twist. It's maybe easy for some of you who find it a bit difficult. Take your one foot against the knee and the side of the other one and then twist as far as you can. Backwards, extend. Take your front arm around the front knee and then rotate as far back as you can. Feel the spine. And then release into forward bend. Wood cobbler. back into Eastern praying position for the dog wish head down and dog wish head up. If you do the chaturanga in between them, which some of you do, try not to go as low as I often go. This it's better for your shoulder like I'm doing now to keep your elbows um, next to your ribs rather than that you drop as deep as I usually do. So keep your forearms straight as you bend your elbows to chaturanga. If you can, less pressure on your shoulders. Or go through plank, or just do dog up, dog down as you normally do it. Armpits and hips toward each other, your head is down, hands and feet away from each other, head to the floor. And then you can do the chaturanga from there into dog, raise your head up. Press your palms towards you. So you can rotate the upper arms out. Press into your front feet, don't drop, over drop your lower back. And find your own rhythm. Acute angle, head to the floor, heels down, thighs back. Sitting bones to your hands if you've got a sway back. You can do chaturanga into a dog with your head up or a plank or just flow. And keep your toes curled if you prefer. Press your palms back, collarbones up. Feel that back bend. Feel that 
counter stretch, head to the floor, get to those hamstrings. Breathe, armpits and hips towards each other, hands and feet away from each other. Head to the floor. Zip up the abdominals, lift out of the shoulders. Look up. Legs and shoulder blades to your waist. So, still working at it. Back into the dog with your head up. Extend, tummy in, rotate the upper arms out as you can, press your palms towards you. Cute angle, head to the floor, look towards your side, knee. Press your heels back, your thighs back. Everything lengthens. Breathe. Always as a release, come into child pose, eastern plane position. Release your wrists. You might have felt it, your shoulders. Round your lower back. I'm going to get into an aversion, a plow. So if you can't do the full plow, just rest on your back and bring your legs up. Light the candle. If you can do the plow, it's tricky for me, it's a proportion as well. And then use a wall and need, if you need to support your back, then support your back. If you can just drop into it, like some of you can just drop into it. Keep your head centered. It's supposed to quieten the brain, so your brain and your head are centered. Don't bring your chin too close to your throat. See if you can press the back of your head down. And sometimes wriggling a bit more onto your shoulders, lengthens. You come more onto your neck. You can also take your hands to your feet if your proportion is such that you don't fall back like I would. Bring your hands to your feet. Another version is keeping your feet wide and then bring your hands between your feet, palms together up. I cannot demonstrate it unless I'm on a block. Use the breath. If you like, press your feet into the wall. Keep that whole body awareness. Comfortable breath. Then roll into a counter stretch, which is the forward bend. I always find it much easier to just flop into it. Release your head. Let me do another forward bend, a right and left one. So either extend your right leg slightly to this side. And if you've done your homework a lot, you can do the half load, just do it that way, because that will give you more of a back stretch. Otherwise, keep it on the floor. Three times dynamically. Toes pointing up. If you're very awkward, sit on a firm. Wherever you can reach, always chest forward, sitting runs back, and your elbows to the floor. Try and ease into it rather than force your way. Do it in stages, perhaps. If you can release your head on your shin, do so. Just breathe. You could take your arms back if you have a tendency to round your upper back. Stay with the breath, whole body awareness. Try not to force, but ease into that. around. So either your foot against the inner thigh or the half lotus. Three times dynamically once you centered. Toes pointing up. Always might be a different one side usually is looser than the other. Keep the 
your back long, your chest forward, sitting bone back, the back of your thigh engaged. Shoulders relaxed. Might take a bit of time for you to reach your full forward bend. Breathe. Let go. Last few breaths. As you come up, maybe shake your legs. And we're going to do a sitting, breathing exercise. So we're going to do some sitting breathing. And then lie down and relax. So put on your tops, put on your socks if you... I mean, depending on what the weather is. We're talking about it being spring and not feeling like spring. <laughs> so it's quite chilly. So make sure you're warm enough, and if you need a blanket afterwards, put it, put it ready. It's a very simple fountain breathing, which we haven't done for a while. And I think it's quite nice to feel the spine when you're in an upright position rather than lying down. So first of all, make sure you're comfortable if you need to sit on a chair or against the wall, if you prefer having a support. Find that support. And make sure your sitting bones are grounded, you're not leaning. And extend without being rigid. So you feel the natural undulating spine. It has got all those movements, which makes it so incredible, flexible, and at the same time strong. So connect us all 33 segments of it. As you close your eyes, and just take a few regular breaths. Feeling that you're centered, your shoulders are relaxed, elbows slightly bent. And once you've got your comfortable position, take the breath from below the pelvic floor and draw it up all the time you're breathing in to the crown. So it's not pulling, it's not contracting. Just slightly contract your core and then take it right up to the crown and as you breathe out, take it all around your back below your firm or the pillow you're sitting on. Sucking it up right into the crown like a fountain of energy. Release it all around you and imagine that energy flowing all around you. Cleansing, re-energizing your whole energy field which, as you know, extends beyond you as well as inside of you. So pulling it up, feel it moving through each segment, through that shishuma, that spinal column, into the crown, and then visualize it all around you. You can make it a color, just pure, pranic, healing light. And imagine that it's real, it's all the radio waves, electromagnetic field, it's really real. So imagine it being real as you put it through you. And all around you. Stimulating your spinal column and also replenishing your cells, the whole of your body. Very really light contraction as you breathe in. Bring some movement in your energy flow. Quieten your mind. Let go of everything else. Feeling the dynamic quality of the energy flow within and around you. And 
see if you can do it as if you're doing it for the first time. So giving you full attention. Follow each segment if you have a little bit of knowledge of your spine. Of anatomy. But even if you have got no anatomical knowledge, you can still sense it flowing from the bottom up. It life. Do that another three times. Take a normal yoga breath or two. Relax, stay upright with the natural curves in your back. Whole body awareness. Beginning to feel that you are energy as well as matter. Becoming lighter. Flowing. And carefully make yourself comfortable with total relaxation on your back. Need a pillow under your head, place it there. If you need a blanket, put it over you. Making sure that the right and the left side of your body are equally positioned. Take a few more breaths into the belly, into your chest. Keep that suspended, witness state, empty mind. Dropping into gravity, feel that you're supported. Belly is soft, your chest is free, your mind spacious. I want you to just go back to the last three months or even six months in nature, in winter. Seeds are formed from autumn to winter. Leaves fall. New compost is made for the next year. Seeds are formed. Different sort of rates. But generally, it's more the winter season that you, in the autumn that you have those seeds. And on some level, we follow nature. We're more exuberant, outgoing, outside, outdoors in summer, and perhaps already a bit in spring. In winter, we more inside ourselves, particularly in the north and south, which I grew up. There's snow, there's ice, there's cold. It's harder, but we have it too. And with the COVID, we, some of us have been maybe more deeper within ourselves. And see what gifts those seeds have brought you. I mean, I can look at my own winter journey, and it's in winter only that I started doing art again. And I definitely will bring that into fruition more and more as I move into spring and summer. It's my gift of this winter. See what you have. Maybe you have been more with your family and appreciate your family more. Maybe you've been writing more, playing music or reading. Simply done meditation. Or I know a lot of you have been walking into nature because you know theatre or other things. Maybe that's a gift you carry with you in the new year. I mean the spring, the summer. So just ponder that for a moment. What gifts have you been able to accumulate in the last season that you can carry through into the new burst of spring and summer? If you can resolve to develop it. Something that feeds you, that nourishes you, that enriches you. 
and perhaps those that are with you, but it's specific to you. In order to give to others, to the world, we also need to feed our own soul and spirit. What is that you can feed yourself with and carry through to the next season? See if you can stay with that. Just relax your features. Settle your tongue. Stay in the moment as it is. Giving yourself a sense of peace, gratitude, and rejuvenation of the next season. A new sense of being alive.
slowly begin to feel your breathing, your clothes against your skin. Become aware of the space around you and your sensations. Grounding yourself back into your body, into this room, as you open your eyes. And it was half a year, 26. Those of you who've done it every week, you can really congratulate yourself because it's quite a milestone. So, in the letter, we will have asked you, those of you who want to come to physical classes, to let us know. So, you can plan. I'd like to open a Saturday class. There's one person who really wants to 9 o'clock on Thursday, but there need to be more than one. So slowly come into a sitting position. Enjoy your Heritage Day, if you are doing it on Heritage Day. And have a good long weekend, good week. And we will reconnect next week. Stay well, safe. Namaste.